<laughs> Man, it is hella cool when like the moon is out during the day. Like, how does that even work? I don't, I don't know. know. When you think about it, the stars are still there, and like, they just keep going. You know, they go on for like forever, like forever, ever, forever, ever. Yeah. I mean, it's like Joe Rogan says, we're just talking monkeys on an organic spaceship flying through the universe. If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. The lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic, and or military consequences of the lie. It thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all of its powers to repress dissent, for the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. No one likes to be wrong, especially ignorant people. No one wants to figure out that their understanding of the world is flawed or foolish. That's why narrow-minded people display an unrelenting loyalty to their opinions. It starts Virtually. super early. One of the first things we're taught as a baby, as a toddler, the earth yeah. is round and they just pound this it into is. you. And most of us go through our lives without ever doubting this assertion. What you learned in kindergarten. It generally goes unchallenged as an obvious fact rather than a debatable claim. Kindergarten. The broad masses of a nation are always more easily corrupted in the deeper strata of their emotional nature than consciously or voluntarily. And thus, in the primitive simplicity of their minds, they're more readily fall victims to the big lie than the small lie. Since they themselves often tell small lies in little matters, but would be ashamed to resort to large-scale falsehoods, it would never come into their heads to fabricate colossal untruths and they would not believe that others could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously. Even though the facts, which prove this to be so, may be brought clearly to their minds, they will still doubt and waver and will continue to think that there may be some other explanation. I'm talking about the universe, black holes, the Big Bang, time travel, God. But what I'm gonna do is teach you how to think, train your mind. In the old days, we called it brainwashing, where you mm -hmm. repeat something and then it becomes true. That's hijacking this feature of our evolutionary brain. So you, you try to sift through what is true, and it must be that which was repeated often enough. You are comfortable in your ignorance, and you don't even know your ignorance because you came to it from, from having learned, but only up to a point. They're not only controlling the information you receive, they're shaping how you receive it, which has an effect on how you then behave. How you create a worldview. You create an understanding of how things are. Either because someone convinced you or you convinced yourself. Now there's a gap or there's some information that conflicts with it. So you're gonna say, if you cherish this worldview, that information that conflicts with it was falsified or that was wrong. They don't know what they're doing you can maintain your worldview. We hold on. Like, you know, I spent so many years learning something, and now the world has changed. The interesting thing about an objective truth is that it's true no matter what. Imagine that. People need to understand to control their minds, otherwise other people will control it for them. And you have no foundation in objective reality, it can, it can be dangerous. If your personal belief system does not have correspondence in objective reality, that's an unhealthy situation for civilization to be in. Not everybody can be a robot polisher. We feel that academia, as the holder of truth, plays an essential role, particularly today.